Of the people walking along Brighton seafront today, few do more than pass a cursory glance at the twisted and contorted remains of the once grand West Pier. Once described as a noble structure that stands unrivaled throughout the whole of Europe, the West Pier opened to the public nearly 140 years ago, on the 6th of October 1866. Designed by Eugenius Birch, the 1,115 foot long structure attracted the Victorian middle classes to promenade its decks. This was a good way to enjoy the sea air and mix with other members of society, a case of sea and be seen. At the end of the 19th century, the head of the pier was redeveloped to include bathing and diving facilities, allowing for some spectacular marine entertainment, from daring diving displays to death-defying bicycle feats. Nineteen sixteen saw another addition to the pier with the building of a concert hall. Reaching a peak in nineteen twenty, this new attraction helped bring in over two million paying visitors who enjoyed its various facilities and amusements. Local residents Bert and Dorothy Fagan remember their time on the pier during the nineteen thirties. My memory of the pier would be a gentle walking place, takes you back to Victorian times, parading really, dressing up and parading to walk down as a young girl. <laughs> I used to go with a, a friend, a girlfriend, and like all young people, looking for romance. <laughs> I didn't used to go any other time but with Dorothy, so, mm. but it was very pleasant, much more romantic. The seat actually attached to the pier itself, they were in a, a curved seat and they're the most uncomfortable seats. Remember trips on that boat from West Pier to the Isle of Wight and then back in the evening when it was getting dark and you saw all the lights of Brighton. It used to be a harpist and violin, all very romantic and quiet and gentle. It was a very free and easy atmosphere, very slow. You didn't have to rush on anything, you had just some time. When you came off the pier, you felt well you'd been somewhere. After the Second World War, falling revenue prompted the addition of amusement arcades, changing the pier's character into an offshore funfair. Michael Robbins remembers his childhood on the West Pier in the 1950s. One of the first things I always wanted to do in the morning when I woke up was to go onto the West Pier. So my mother would always take me across the road after breakfast at four or five years of age and we would spend the morning on the West Pier. I was never allowed to go on it by myself the reason being the balustrade all the way around it was actually the seating it's very very low down and for a little boy uh, I could easily have crawled through it and gone straight in the water. I think the charge to get on the West Pier was six sixpence and possibly threepence for children but it had all sorts of wonderful things on it, uh, so many different attractions. One thing I do remember was on the right hand side, about halfway down, there was a man who was there for many, many years and he used to sit you down in profile and with a pair of scissors and black paper cut out your profile, rather like a Victorian silhouette. 
I remember the West Pier right the way up until it closed, and when it closed, I think it was very, very sad. Despite the changing face of the pier throughout the 1950s, Peter and Shirley Marsh still remember its romantic side. When I worked in my mother's shop there, she had this gift shop. They used to have music playing right there, and it would come through the loudspeakers. My mother used to waltz all the way down there to the music. That was really nice. It's a fishing tackle shop, so I used to uh, sell fishing tackle and bait. And she used to say to me, why don't you talk to that man in the fishing tackle shop? He's very nice. Peter said he used to sit there reading his paper in the morning and he used to watch me walk the length of the pier. That's when we first met. Yeah, I didn't realise when I met her that she'd have her wicked way with me later on. I was in the shop with him and this man came and put a black velvet strip along the counter with all these engagement rings and Peter said, well, which one do you want? And I couldn't stop laughing, I was just so happy. Working on the pier still afforded interesting opportunities to meet many different kinds of people, such as Margaret Cullen, who worked as a palmist on the West Pier during the 1960s. It was a, a nice pier. I must admit, I have some very good memories of it. I did the private readings in the little rooms. We used to have queues of people. We did very well, really. I'm not a snob or anything at all, but you seem to get a better class of people. I've seen some very famous people that are usually just as that ordinary as you and me. I met Ron and he was doing his escapology and he's a nice chap. Undoubtedly, the most unique character she met was Ron Cunningham, also known as the Great Omani, who regularly performed death-defying stunts on the pier up until 1974, just one year before it finally closed its gates to the public. I presented the, what was known as the Houdini Challenge to Death Jump, in which you were chained up, padlocked hands, cuffed and all that, and thrown into the sea. Well, that takes a hell of a lot of beating. And we were now getting towards the end of the life of the West Pier. And we told them, I'm going to reproduce Houdini's jump. And he performed it 50 years earlier as a salute to the great master. And I took the jump. And I went down, about probably 15 foot. I did my usual escape out of the handcuffs and the chains and what have you. I, I came up again, bowed to the audience, I got a big round of applause, and that was a moment I was proud of, because um, to, be able to, to be able to do something that the great master had done was quite something. And incidentally, that was the last big stunt that was ever performed on the West Pier. Shortly after that, only a few weeks after the pier was closed. I doubt what occasion, there was a big crowd standing around, ready to watch me go in. There was I, complete with my chains, handcuffs and my shorts, which I was very proud of. Unfortunately, they shrank a bit, but never mind, that was all part of the show. There was a lovely American lady there, obviously a very wealthy lady. And she was looking over the side of the pier, like most people were, waiting to see the psychological misfit, the great O'Malley, go into the water. As she was looking over, suddenly a very large handbag fell smack over the edge into the sea. Uh, passport, money, absolutely everything. It must be a terrible moment for the poor lady. Luckily, I was ready to go. I dived in about 15 foot down in the sea. And I managed to sail up, of course, towards the heavens again. And I came, my head popped above the water, and I held the handbag up. There was a cheer from the crowd, which <laughs> was rather nice. It must have made her day. She offered me some money. Uh, I thought, well, no. I mean, you know, escapologists and pickpockets are never poor. And she came up and she gave me um, a kiss on both 
cheeks, which I appreciated very much. I didn't wash for about two weeks. That was a wonderfully happy ending to this lady's day. Turning 91 in July this year, Ron is believed to be the world's oldest performing stuntman. During the making of this documentary, he proved he still has the ability to cheat death by setting himself on fire in his local pub. And it was fire that almost led to the death of the West Pier in 2002, when two separate arson attacks destroyed both the pavilion and the concert hall. Ravaged by the unrelenting sea, the Heritage Lottery Fund later withdrew its funding to restore the pier. Today, it remains the nightly roost for hundreds of starlings who swarm onto the derelict pier at dusk. But it is still a home, a resting place, where one goes to see and be seen. A romantic ruin within which lie a wealth of untold stories that have touched the hearts of many. Those who romanced. Those who played. Who danced. Who worked. and who performed. On Brighton's West Pier. There's a story though, the West Pier was the best pier. <laughs>